Hello everyone, welcome to Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque painting live on Valentine's Day. So I was going to paint in the Brenda's Creative Classroom group, but live is not an option in there, so we're on our Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque Facebook page. So I don't know what they changed, but um, it's not there. <laughs> so we will wait until everyone can get in. And hopefully I can get it up on my tablet here. And I don't see live, so it's I'm not sure. I guess it's just gonna be one of those problem days. Well, let's see. Well, it looks like it's working. Looks like I got some people. I don't know if I can just find it on my tablet. Isn't that how it goes? So, happy Valentine's, everyone. Trying to get the group to come up, or the Facebook page here to come up on my tablet so I can see what you guys are commenting. Let's see if it went into the group because it's not on my page. It's not on there. I well, hope everyone had a good day. Did everyone have a good Valentine's? And it's not coming up on the tablet. Oh my goodness. I can see you guys on the phone, but I can't see you on the tablet. Looks like we got a bunch of highs here. I'm not sure why it's not coming in on the tablet. Well, oh, there we go. All right, and I got the cat in here under my feet again tonight. All right, we're good to go, I think. So, this was our Valentine's um, treat that was in our BIS box, and I'm just using it for our little picture tonight. So I have base coated our um, Halloween, Halloween, our Valentine lovers with black, just so that it was ready to go for tonight. So let's see, it looks like we got messages going. Um, so it's not in the creative classroom group. I don't know why there's not a live tab in there anymore today. There's only a Reels tab, R-E-E-L-S, where it says it's only last for... Um, 60 seconds, so I don't know what that's about. So, and I think I need to grab a cough drop here quick. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Oh. oh, that's a haul. That's a strong one. I haven't been to the store yet, so we will use our styrofoam plate for our paint. And I was thinking I would do it probably something non-traditional instead of just all red and white. I've seen a picture of a gnome with turquoise and um, bright blue, so I think we're going to do that. Let me grab some bright blue and where's some turquoise here? Turquoise, where'd you go? Well, it should be here because it's what we're using for the box. Okay, but maybe we won't be using turquoise and bright blue. We'll be using red, because I don't know where it went. I'm blind or something here tonight. That's navy. Darn. I'm just not seeing it, and it should be right here in the cart. Okay, well, I guess we'll go with red and our usual colors, because I'm not finding the turquoise. So, let's see. Do you guys want red, pink, white, silver, grays? What do you want? Give me some color ideas, as long as we're not um, finding what I wanted. I will actually start with the face, the noses, I guess. Um, and for that, I'm going to use Peach Fuzz. OS492 Peach Fuzz. And we'll give that a good shake. Um, a lot of times I will use the 
um, light brown on the gnomes or the medium brown, but I'm going to use the, um, we'll start with the peach fuzz, I guess. So we'll get a little pile of that. And from there, because the noses are in, and the little fingers aren't real big, we don't need a real big brush. So I'm going to go with my size, I think it's a three flat here. Yep, a three flat. You know, we got pinks and red, we got red. So I guess we'll just go with the pinks and red since I can't find the turquoise and the blue. But we'll start with our nose for tonight. And anyone that comments, I will do a drawing after we're done tonight and post the winner tomorrow. And so anyone that comments, I'll write your name down on a piece of paper. And then I will draw a winner. If I have time, I'll do it yet tonight. But I do have slip to pump into buckets yet. So I'll just anyone that comments tonight, we will put your I'll put your name in a bucket. And then I will do a drawing. And the drawing is actually going to be for the gnomes that we're painting tonight. So that should be a good little um, drawing piece. It will be the gnomes that we're painting tonight. So I'm just dry brushing with a flat number three. Um, it's a Chung King Boar Bristle brush, so that's a natural hair brush for dry brushing. And I'm going across my crevices between the nose and the hat, and then the nose and the beard, and the nose and her shirt. Um, so happy Gnome Day we got going, happy Valentine's Day. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I still got this um, COVID cough going on, but it is getting better. Um, so I'm just going to brush back and forth on here, um, get a nice layer going, and then we will also go and get our, um, her hands are back here and his hands are over here, so we'll get those as well. Um, again, just brushing across any crevices, you want to go across them instead of with them so that they don't fill in. So we will do that. It looks like Courtney joined us tonight where it says Brenda's Brush Strokes and Bisque. That's actually Courtney. Um, so thanks, Courtney, for joining in. So again, I'm just brushing back and forth on any of the um, flesh areas. So we have our fingers going horizontal, so I'm going vertical across them. And we'll come around to the back and get the hand. If your paint is shiny and wet, you have too much um, paint in your brush. Um, so, Courtney, when I went to get into the creative classroom, there was no live video option. It was only the um, reels, R-E-E-L-S, and then photos or post. So I, I don't know what they changed. But that's why I'm on the main Facebook page and not in the creative classroom. So I don't know if you missed that or you heard all that. Um, so now we have all our flesh with one layer and when I come back over here I look at this and I can see that that's not enough because I can see black through it and it's not real even so we're going to build up another layer on there and just keep right on going. Um, I did not have time to track down any trivia information for tonight but anyone that posts we, I will do a drawing later after I'm able to write down everyone's names and then I will do a drawing for the piece that we're painting and I'll ship it to you. So that will be our drawing for tonight. Um, I won't be able to write down the names while I'm painting here so that's why I'll have to do it afterwards. So we're just going to keep building up that um, flesh color. I usually use, usually use the light brown, um, but tonight we're using the peach fuzz just to make them kind of soft looking. So you can see that that's kind of sloppy looking there. That's because I have too much paint in that brush and it was too wet. So we're just going to let that dry. We'll come around here to the thumb. And now we'll go over to the other fingers and let them, that one dry. Um, so you do want to get just a little bit of paint in your brush and then brush it out going across all your crevices and getting a nice coverage, a nice even coverage. 
And so we'll do that. And then we'll just keep going back and forth from one area to the next. And brush away. So what did everyone do for Valentine's Day? Everyone, anyone go out to eat? Anyone get flowers? Anyone send flowers? I didn't really do anything. Um, worked, worked around here. See, we're just going to keep going here. And just kind of get that built back up so it's more even. And I'm just brushing nice and light. So I'm kind of getting a um, what I call a hot spot there on the nose. I probably had the, my paint too wet. So I'm actually going to just dab um, some of the f peach fuzz on there. And we're going to have to let that dry. And I'll have to come back to that. So that's how I deal with those areas. So we'll just kind of let that dry. I probably got it too wet when I was brushing. The not being able to get into the creative classroom kind of threw me for a loop there so it kind of makes a person a little frustrated. I don't know why the live tab went away but that's Facebook for you. So it looks like some Christina had her husband grilled steak and shrimp and Shirley's husband brought a full heart heart full of candy. Well that sounds like you guys had good stuff then. So I had a, a mint shake from Arby's a couple of days ago. I guess that'll be my Valentine's. I kind of like the mint shake, and McDonald's didn't have them yet. So I went to Arby's and got one. And, um, so Gail says, is that a hand in the back that you missed? Let's see, do we have a hand back there? Yes, we do. Thank you for catching that, Gail. So we'll get this little hand, too. And just kind of build that up real light. Again, going across those textures. And I had, I had one of these at the classroom, but it was painted all in red, and I wasn't actually going to do red tonight, so that's why I didn't bring it. Looks like Patty's spending it with her cat. I'm spending it with the cat here, too, in the molds, I guess. So We'll let each of those dry and just keep going back to our other flesh areas till we get it built up nice. So I wasn't going to have any of these in the bisque add-on sale on the 24th for the boxers, but I did have a couple of you message, so I, I can do that if you're a boxer and you want one, I'll um, bring the mold back home. But tonight was just a nice free night for everybody, so um, don't want to forget about everybody. Because I know not everyone can afford the boxes, so we still want to continue teaching, and this is a good way to do it on maybe on holidays or something. I'm not sure exactly when it'll be. We have to get all that worked into the schedule here. So you can see that's getting a little better. I can still see that there, so we're just going to let that dry good. That's the best thing is to let a spot like that dry and then um, come back to it later. But we'll work on our other areas here. Going to get his fingers here. You want a nice coverage of the of the peach fuzz. You don't want to see a whole lot of black through it. You just want that black down in those crevices. Again, going across all the indents, meaning the fingers, the the um, the line between the fingers. I want to go across them instead of with them. So that was way too wet. 
we'll brush that out and come around to the front get that thumb let's see what else nancy got a feather com comfortable and comforter and sheets oh you got all kinds of stuff good for you and a hundred dollars in lotto wow let me see clara says her husband and i work so we'll eat tomorrow yep that's good it doesn't have to be on um today um, sometimes it's better because then the, all the restaurants and stuff aren't quite so busy. So you can see where that little hot spot was. I'm just kind of dabbing the paint and building it up, and, and I'll let that dry, and I'll just keep coming back to it every now and then so we can get that nice and even, too. I think I was probably too wet with the brush there, and that, that can happen. Okay. So from there, I'm going to um, just save that brush so we can come back to the skin tone. And actually, I kind of missed her little um, neckline here. She's got her little neckline showing. So we'll get some on that. Okay. So now since we want red, I would start with rust. So usually I tend to start with his beard first. I just kind of like starting with the beard first. So let's get some gray here. We have Ash OS. 567 ash OS 567 ash Let's see Terry's hubby made dinner Clara is watching and painting so that's good we'll get our ash once we get our hole unplugged the way it looks get a bunch of ash and again, that's not a real big area, so I'll probably go with this size 5, and this one's around just because it's what I grabbed, so we'll go in there and brush that out. Get our brush nice and dry, and now we'll brush back and forth across his beard. We won't worry too much about the hearts. We can um, touch those up with red or silver or pink, whatever it is we decide that we're going to do. So we'll just brush back and forth here. And I'll try to, kind of trying to rush so we can get it done tonight just because it's kind of a one-nighter and we don't want it to take all night. Whoop, almost went in the wrong color there. Back into our ash. So Nancy says, what brushes are you you're, you using? Actually, they're new, the new brushes that were, um, I'm going to be putting in the order tomorrow. I didn't get to it today. Um, they're new from Royal & Langnickel. They're a Majestic. They're called Majestic. It's a new dry brush with the Chung King um, bore bristles in, which is kind of the top of the line, um, the best you can get for dry brushing. Um, a set of eight of those is $49.99. And they're available to my subscribers to add to their boxes. Um, right now I'm not carrying anything on the website because I still need to learn how to um, do the website. Um, that's something Courtney used to do and I have to learn how to do it now. So We're just going to dry brush his little beard here. And I want to get down under his and her nose where I got their flesh color on the beard. And then we want to come over to the side and then also I come all the way down onto the bottom. I always do my bottoms as well so that they look nice. So we'll dry brush that. Um, these are similar to the purple brushes that we had last year that we can't get anymore. Um, they're supposed to be replacing those with these, so um, that's what we'll be carrying. We do have the the kind of it's not the beginners brand the beginners level brushes, but the next level up from those, and then we have the there's another qual or step of quality in between those and these so um because these are 
expensive. It's $49.99 for eight of them. So we're just getting his little beard all dry brushed here, getting under the nose where we got the flesh color on there, getting up to the hat. Not worrying about getting it on the um, hearts because we'll be doing something with those, maybe silver. I'm not sure how much glitter I have here because all the glitter is at the classroom, but I was thinking glitter might be kind of nice on here. Somewheres. Alright, so we have a nice gray beard here with the ash now. So you can see most of the, the majority of the area is covered with the ash. And it sounds like I forgot to put the phone on. Do not disturb, so I'm not going to touch it because chances are I'd end up shutting the phone off on you guys instead of just shutting off do not disturb. Um, so I'm getting most of the beard is actually covered with paint. There's only a little bit of black left down in those crevices. Maybe like 10% of the black is left. That's kind of how I try to explain it is like 10% of the black left. And then the rest has a nice even coverage of the... Um, ash on it. So from ash we can go to either gray or white. And I don't see my... Um, so you can either go to gray if you wanted him more gray or you could go to white. I'm just going to go to white tonight to um, save time. So let's see. Jackie went to Florida and met Heiko, Michael Harbour and how Michael Harbridge on Friday in Ceramic Heaven. Yeah, I bet you that was Ceramic Heaven. Um, is it a very big show or a small show? Ours is not real big. Ours is usually in August. Um, so now I'm using my same dirty brush with the ash in it, but I'm just working the white in it a little bit and then brushing it out on my paper towel here. And now we will, I will lightly brush on my beard just because I want him a little bit lighter. I don't want him to look like too much of an old man with a lot of gray. So we'll build up our white on there a little bit. So what kind of good things did you buy? Oh, two buildings. Oh, nice. Did you do any classes at the, at the show, um, Jackie? I'm debating if I should do a um, booth at our show in Waukesha in August or not. I'm not sure yet. Um, it would take up probably Thursday to go down and set up, and then Friday and Saturday, and then Sunday to come back home. So that would be four days that I would lose with working on the box stuff. So I'm not sure how, how that would work. Um, so I'm just dry brushing the white over the ash. And you can see that once you get that built up in that brush a little bit, it goes quite a ways. Um, I, ha I haven't added it yet. And I'm just going across the hearts and across the vertical lines in his beard. And once I notice that the paint isn't coming out of the brush anymore, then I can go back and get some more white. But it's actually coming out pretty good yet. So now I'm going to go and get just a little bit of white and brush it out. You don't you don't need a whole lot of paint. You're just getting a little bit. Um, otherwise, if you go in there and get a whole lot, you're just going to be brushing it out on your paper towel and not not really using it. Um, so you just want a little bit and then brush it out. So now we kind of have a nice even layer of the white on all of the beard. But I kind of want to highlight all those center sections a little bit more, so I'm going to brush back and forth, kind of going up and down with that beard. I don't want to get it in my black crevices, but I just want to get it on the top section of, of each little beard section and, and let the, the ash kind of on each side, and that will give your piece more dimension because it will be highlighted in the center. Um, so Luna says, how do you like the new brushes? I, I, I like them so far. So far, so good. Um, the paint seems to go on nice with them. They're not a real stiff bristle. They're kind of a nice soft bristle. 
Um, so let's see, Jackie says she didn't do any classes, but you filled your car with bisque and paint and brushes. Yeah, so that's the fun part of going to the show, right? Um, so now we'll come, you can see now it's kind of highlighted right through the center. So now we'll come right through the center of this one, which is kind of wider. So that'll be a wider, wider highlight, I guess you could say. come all the way down and now we have our last little strip here so we'll kind of go right in the middle of that so we have to wait all the way till August for our show I think two years ago we were going to go to the Ohio show but then that got canceled that was the first year of COVID So no normally I don't go with my um, crevices, but because I'm trying to highlight just this top center, I am going with it, but I'm not getting any of the white down in that crevice to cover up the, the darker colors. So that's, that's just another way to do it. So now his beard's looking pretty good. So it's nice and strong white through the center and then less as it goes away from the center. So that's what I was looking for. So let's see. Okay, so we got that done. So colors, we need colors. I was really set on doing purple for Courtney, but I guess that isn't going to happen. So I need rust because wherever we put red, we need rust. So we're going to go to rust which will be our OS454 Rust. So we'll get a pile of rust on here. So we have our OS454 Rust. So we'll put our gray brush aside just in case I want to use that again. And I'm going to go to my 5 flat because I do have kind of bigger areas here. Um, no, I'm just not sure what colors to do him because I'm kind of kind of had something else planned. But let's see. We'll go with uh, maybe make we could make this some grays and we'll make I guess we'll just make his little outfit rust. We'll just start there and um, so I have my five flat. So I don't want to make big brush strokes across his beard. Um, so I want to go across his arm here, though. So I'm just going to start away from where the beard is and the shirt, or his shirt, his body part, and just work up to it. And then I can see where that rust is going. And then just stop once I get to the black that's down in the crevice. So Carrie wants the name of the brush brushes. They're Majestic. By Royal and Langnickel. They're a new acrylic handle um, brush with chunking bristles. So we're going to just brush right along his little arm here. But I'm not doing those big strokes because I don't want to get that rust onto his beard. Um, so I'm just coming, just riding right along the edge there. And then I can go back and make my bigger brush strokes. And go across my crevice between his arm and his body. And we'll come across to where his little daisy is. And we'll turn him around so where his um, fingers are. Again, I don't want to do those big, big brush strokes. So I'm just going to start away and kind of do that little C stroke until my rust gets close to the fingers. And then I'll quit. So we'll, there's a picture, um, I guess there's not a picture. I was thinking I've had posted a picture, but I didn't. It's just in the BIS box group of the brushes. So now I can do the back and forth in the, in the big area here. 
I just don't want to do that big motion where my beard and where his flesh is. So now we have one nice layer on there, so we'll go around to the back and get the back of him. When I'm um, done for tonight, I can type in the name of the brushes. So you can look um, later and see if you still didn't, didn't catch what they were. Um, so I'm just doing my nice big back and forth brush strokes here on, on the... Um, his little coat in the back. And then we have an arm here, so I believe that arm probably goes to her. So I don't think I'm going to make her red. I think I'll make her pink so we'll I won't get the too much rust on her sleeve there. So we'll just grab some more rust again, brush it out. Again, when I get over here where the little hand hand and fingers are, I'm just going to do those little C strokes. Start away from the hand and work my way up until I can see that the rust is right almost next to it, but leaving that black down in, in the little space between the shirt and the fingers. And just kind of turn it whichever way you need to do it to, to get that brush down in there. I do like the flat brushes for that because I can um, turn them on their flat part and do the bigger areas and then turn it on their side to get next to the little um, the little detail area. So it's actually kind of on its side when I'm going around on the or on its edge as I'm going around the fingers because you don't want to do big strokes and get your fingers all full of um, the rust because then you'd have to go back and touch that up so I'll do those C strokes along here of this other hand which is his hand so we'll and come around to the shoes and it's okay if you get it on the daisy that's not going to hurt any I just don't want to get it all over his hands Brush back now. So when it's wet and shiny like that, that's too much. I gotta brush that brush out on my paper towel. So we kind of build that up and get one layer on there. So the set of the blush brushes are all flat. Nope, there's four flats and four rounds. Four flats and four rounds in the set. And now we can do our big back and forth stroke over here by the hair and the arm, and then the little stroke by the fingers. And then we'll come back and get some more on the front, because now we'll let the back dry. So this, um, when I was doing the gray, I was using a round one. I, I like them both. I just tend to use the flat ones a little more lately just because I like to be able to turn them on their edge. Um, it's really personal preference as far as that goes. So we're going to get a nice coat of rust on his little shirt here. Being careful not to get it on those fingers. It's okay if we get it on the shoes. Try to keep it off the beard. Oh, you're making me want those brushes. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking them. The, the paint is going on really nice with them. I mean, they, you kind of get what you pay for with brushes. And it can take a lot of the frustration out of painting. If you do have good, you know, better quality brushes. So that was a little bit shiny, but it's okay. Again, I'm kind of standing it on its edge to get around the, the little fingers there and not making those great big um, brush strokes. I'll do the same by the other hand here. And then where I have more room, I can make those big strokes. 
It's okay if we get it on her sleeve. That's not going to hurt any. All right. So now we have him with the red, or our base coat for our red, which is the rust. And now we have to decide what she's going to have that's red. Um, let's see. Looks like she's got a little dress here, and then there's a little thing there. She's got some shoes here. Well, maybe we'll make her hat red. How's that? So let's see. So we'll grab some rust again, brush it out. And we'll just dry brush back and forth on her little hat here. Um, she's got a little rim that goes down, so we'll go back and forth across that so that we're going to cross that um, line where the hat is, excuse me, meeting the dress. And we just want to get a nice light layer at first, and then we can come back and um, add some more layers. So we'll brush back and forth. And we'll kind of got to be careful where the um, nose is here, so I'm going to kind of turn my brush on its edge. I, I don't want to fill in that crevice where the black is, but I do want to cover up the um, peach fuzz that's on the hat, on her hat. So I just start away from it and then make those little C strokes, and you can see that Russ is slowly getting closer and closer to her nose, and then I'm letting that little bit of black between her nose and, and her hat. So we'll just keep working our way around. So it's just little little brush strokes that I'm doing um, along her nose because I don't want to make big brush strokes and get, get her nose all full of um, rust. So now we kind of have that first layer there so now we can go all over our hat here. So let's say um, Clara says hot pink. Gail says I find it difficult brushing on smooth paint surfaces. Yeah, smoother surfaces are a little harder, but you can you can still dry brush on them. Um, it takes a lot of patience. Like I, I'm brushing real light. I'm not brushing real hard. And we just gotta um, build up our paint in layers. So we'll get a layer on it, and then we'll um, just keep coming back around. So just nice, you can do uh, nice big brush strokes on the, where you have a lot of room. It's just where you, uh, like when you're next to the skin and the nose, you don't want to do great big, great big ones. So I'm just going to work my way around. Now we have our heart over here, so I'm going to go across that so we keep that dark darkness down in there. And then we have our fingers over here, so we're going to do those little little C strokes again. Um, so I brush that out really good, and I'll start away from it, away from those fingers, and just make them little C strokes, and just gradually work my brush towards it. And you can see that the rust is slow, slowly gets um, next to it, and then you just kind of stop. Now I did get it on her finger there, but we can touch that up later too. We're just going to um, keep going here. Um, the, the smooth surfaces do probably take just a little more patience than the something that has a lot of texture on it. But you can see we, we just slowly build up our rust here and we keep going. Um, you could paint this. You wouldn't have to dry brush it. So this is just, um, I just thought I'd dry brush it because that's what a lot of people want to learn and it's kind of in the free class here tonight, so that's why I'm just dry brushing it. But you could paint it as well. So we'll get this kind of nice layer of our rust on. It's okay if we get it on the hearts, that isn't going to hurt any. And then you kind of got to get up inside her little um, 
the little inside of that that hat there. I was thinking I should have um, had had a silk screen made for this. We could have silk screened hearts onto it or something, but we'll just do some dots. We'll do something that's easy. So now we have our pretty much our whole her whole hat covered, but you can see it's really like there's a lot of black here, a lot of black there, a lot of rust there. Uh, we, we, we want it more even like his, his little jacket is over here. So now we'll have to just start back over. And we just got to work it back over. Just keep building up that rust. And we just want to do littler strokes when we're over here by the nose. So again, I'll start away from the nose and just make them little, it's like a little C stroke. You can go either way, C stroke or a comma. And just real gently brush it and build that up by the nose there. And then we'll come back and get the rest of the hat, the underside of the hat here. And then we'll just keep going. So again, when we're um, done tonight, I will write everyone's name down and do a drawing, and then I'll post who the winner is, and um, you'll have to message me your address, or if you know I already have it, I'll message you. So we'll just dry brush away and get a nice rust-colored hat here. So the, the reason for doing the rust is it, it helps the red cover better. Um, it's just something I've always done. Um, some people use gray. Some people use orange. It's it's all personal preference. I've just always used rust or terracotta or a burnt orange. And it just kind of, um, because the rust is in the red family, it just it helps the red cover better. see Denise says hello everyone so she made it okay well hello Denise so we're just dry brushing our little um, Valentine sweethearts here and when I'm um, done tonight I'm going to write everyone's name down and then draw a winner and then um, that will be our drawing they'll get the little sweetheart gnomes that we're painting right live here tonight so we're just dry brushing it's just one of the options of how this piece could be done. You wouldn't have to dry brush it. You could paint it. You could paint it and antique it. You could whatever whatever you want to do. Um, I just thought I'd dry brush because that's kind of what everyone's um, kind of into the dry brushing, especially if you don't have access to kilns to do any fired stuff. So, so I'm just building up the rust on our on it on her hat so that we can put red on it. The rust again helps the red cover. So anytime I'm using red, I will. Um, they don't really matter what shade of red. Any any shade of red, I'll use the rust first. So we'll um, get our rust on here, and and so I started from the front, and now I came to the back. And we will just keep working our way around. And it's looking pretty good. This is what we're going for, a nice even coverage of our rust. Where we want just the uh, black left down in the crevices. So I was going to not do traditional colors, but for some reason my purple and turquoise isn't here so I can't was can't do that so we kind of have a nice layer on the back now so I need some more rust so we'll grab some more of our rust and now we'll come back around to the front so our side you can see we still need some on the side here so we'll build that up so you, you don't want to do one complete area and then go to the next area. You just want to get nice a nice light layer 
um, all over and then ju just start back over again and just build it up nice and nice and slow um, so you can see this is where we were and this is where we we this was our first layer now that's our second layer um, so now we're getting our second layer up here so it kind of matches the the rest of it and then we will probably need a whole another layer or two yet because we really don't want a whole lot of um, the black showing the black is really just for down in the crevices for the sh shading or shadows and that gives your piece a lot of um, dimension to it by having that black down in those crevices so now you can see that area is matching that area pretty good so it's we kind of have about the same coverage of rust on it now but when I look at it so when I turn it around and look at it I can still see a lot of black through my rust and I want more of an even coverage on the main areas, kind of like I have over here. So we're going to go around it one more time. So we'll kind of start over here by the nose again. And again, I'm just going to do those little, kind of a little C-stroke. I kind of have the put the brush on its edge instead of the wide part. And do like you're writing the letter C or making a comma. And you start away from the nose and then gradually work up to it and you can see right where that wet paint is and that you're getting that next layer on there so that that's already done there that went really quick um, so now we're just going to work our way around the rim of the hat here and you want this layer really nice and even because if you come with your if you came with your red at this point because there's black here and a lot of black there and a lot of rust here your red would be very patchy or blotchy looking so you have to get that base that base underneath there of that um, rust nice and nice and even um, so it's it, it takes a few few layers of it and it's better to have light layers than one heavy layer so you can see we're just building it up again I'm getting another layer on it so really in this main area of this hat, there really isn't hardly any black left. The black is just left around the edges and the crevices. And, and that's the shading that the piece is going to have. And we can't forget her little hat up here that's tangled around his. I mean, you do have to kind of change your angles so you can get down up under this hat. But you can see it's it's starting to come together pretty nice. It's getting a nice even coverage of the rust. And we'll come back to the back so I, um, hopefully you can see that it's it, like it's blotchy and splotchy, meaning that there's black here, black there, black there, more rust here, more rust there. We, we don't want that. We want it nice and even. Like this is a nice even layer of the rust. So that that's what we're working for. So that's what we're gonna keep keep going. You kind of have to get in the little hat there to get that little, just that little part that's wrapped around the other one. So my cat brought, just brought his toy here. Apparently he wants someone to play with him. He's always a pest when I'm um, talking, otherwise he's in bed sleeping. So, have, it, have any of you done this piece already? Have you done the like the traditional red? I think the one at the classroom that I did is it's it's in their traditional red. So that's why I was gonna kinda try to do a different color here tonight, but I guess we got red since I hauled off the purple and the blue and turquoise and I can't find it. So now I've gotta kinda get down in, in, in that area there, so I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way so you guys can see, but that's a little bit hard. But we're just building up that rust all over the whole um, area. So Carrie says she's painted. And what color did you paint him, Carrie? I'm guessing like the red and the pinks and the silvers and the grays are probably the most popular colors. I was going to do him with a purple, sh purple shoes and kind of a bright blue hat. And then do the hearts with the red and the silver. But we'll have to save that for another time.
All right, so we kind of got the whole hat there. I got to get along her little, um, along the hands here yet. So again, I'm going to, and we have to get underneath there because that's kind of not very even. We want that more even. And it's okay if we get the rust on her shirt. That's not going to hurt her dress. That's not going to hurt any. Um, but now I want to be careful when I'm by the hand here so I don't get rust all over the hand. So I start away from kind of away from it and then just work my way down to it and I can see where that rust is going on. And you can go back and forth on the heart. That's not going to hurt anything. So that's looking pretty good. We got a pretty nice layer of rust on here. It's looking pretty even, and that's what I'm kind of looking at. It's kind of pretty black over there yet, so I'm going to um, dry brush there a little bit more. So what were you going to paint turquoise? I was going to use like um, probably like turquoise on here, the bright blue on here, the purple on here. It was going to be kind of really colorful. <laughs> excuse me so I just seen a picture of um they weren't valentine gnomes they were just gnomes and on pinterest and they had those colors and I thought well that'd be really cute with the um valentine's gnomes and then just give them the red hearts and silver hearts and just make their clothing a little more um, colorful I'm gonna get just a little more along those fingers over here and then I think that looks pretty good. So you can see that the, the rust is pretty even. Um, pretty even on this side too. So from there we can go to red, I think. So we have barnyard red. I have garnet red. I wonder where the real red went. And let's see. I think we have some real red over here. So which red would you guys like? Um, I'm kind of tend to go with the real red usually. We have garnet, barnyard red, and real red. I think we're gonna go with the garnet. Let's do something different. We'll do garnet on her, and that might go good with the pinks. So we have garnet red OS 480, garnet red OS 480. So we'll shake that up really good because that's been sitting. We'll spin our plate around here a little bit. So now I'm going to use my same rusty brush and grab some new paper towel. And we'll go right into the rust or the um, garnet and kind of work that into the brush good. And then brush it out really good over here. And now we can start dry brushing. Um, again, I like to start on the back, so if I gob something up, it's not all over the front. So maybe we can give her a, a pink pink dress to go with this garnet red, because it's kind of got that hue in it, that pinkish hue. So we'll brush that out. And kind of brush across our rim of her hat here. Again, doing those C strokes over here by the hands. And then I start, so this, you can see it actually pretty good. You start away from it. And you can see that the garnet red is slowly getting closer and closer. And like right there is right where you want it. So that's as far as I have to go. So it's just those little C strokes instead of making them big strokes and getting that garnet red all over her hands. And then you have to um, touch those up again. So now we'll get a nice layer of garnet red on here. And that'll take quite a bit because we don't want to see the rust coming through it. Um, so they probably do take a little bit longer to dry brush just because everything is um, pretty smooth on, on this these guys. So we do have all the um, lovers from Clay Magic. 
So any of you boxers can message us on any of those if you ever want those. Um, there's ones that have um, sunflowers, but I think they'd be really cute if they were all painted up as daisies. It was one of the new ones from last fall. So I'm just getting a nice layer of our garnet red on here. And that's a little wet, so we'll brush that out. If it's wet and shiny, you got too much. And we'll brush back and forth on the rim here. And it's okay if we get it on the heart because we'll probably put some glitter or something on the heart or make it silver, who knows. And now we got to work our way around the nose. So we'll do those little little strokes again. So it's just like the letter C. I start away from the nose. Just do these little, they're probably like half inch strokes. You can see that I'm up to the black now. So then I'll come back out and just keep doing that C stroke and working my way up to the black. Kind of the closer I get, the smaller the stroke gets. And we'll just work our way right around the nose. I kind of don't even lift the brush off the piece. It's just going right, just that little C stroke right along the nose, letting that black down in there. Um, now I'm past the nose so I can make those bigger strokes again. So we can get her covered here and not be here all night. So we'll just brush back and forth. So now we have to kind of get to the back, we have to kind of get in this little area underneath the hat. Let's see, will you have the sunflower gnomes at your bis sale next week? I, I will not, but if that's something you want, Kim, you can just message me. I was thinking maybe I should have a um, the Bish show with nothing but the lovers. I could have all the lovers one one of the Bish shows. We're gonna have quite a bit of Easter stuff next week um, for you Bis boxers. So we're just brushing back and forth here. Now I got some paper towel in there. You can see we're just getting one nice layer of our um, garnet red all over our hat and then we'll come back and do another layer so we're actually back around to the back where we started. Brush that out. Now you can see the hat looks pretty ugly yet. Oh, all the lovers packing nightmare. Oh, you're right, Connie. I shouldn't even thought of that, right? The lovers take up a lot of space in the bay, in the in the boxes. So now we're kind of back around. Um, got a layer on our hat, but we can see that I can see a lot of rust here and there. So it's it's really blotchy or spotchy. So we're gonna have to build up this um, garnet red some more on this hat just to get it a lot more even colored and, and nice looking because right now it's kind of ugly. So we'll just keep doing probably like three layers just like we did with the rust. So we'll brush back and forth here on our big areas. Grab our um, garnet red and we'll start away from our fingers and kind of work towards them and just start away from it do that little C stroke or comma stroke and you can see I can get it right up to them um, I could do that even along the heart instead of making those big strokes and getting it all full but that's okay we'll get that covered up too so we'll brush this back and forth here see it's slowly getting a nice coverage on it we're slowly getting rid of all that rust underneath there so it's nice and um, even coverage so we'll just keep building that up 
And I think we need some more. So we're doing Garnet Red OS 480. And we need some more. It's a nice kind of a burgundy color if no one's, if you haven't used it before. It's just a nice deep rich color. Um, it goes good with pink because it kind of has a, like a pink hue to it. So we'll get in there and brush that away. So I tend to do, on flat surfaces like this, I tend to do that kind of that big C stroke. It kind of blends that um, paint down on instead of the, the straight back and forth um, brushing. But that that's just me. That's just what I do. You guys got to do what works for you. See, the color looks good. Yeah, it's it's coming around here. You can see it looks pretty good there. It's still pretty ugly on the front. But you just keep keep brushing away at it, those little layers those little light layers at a time and you just build it up so we're we're getting there so this video will be on um, on the Brenda's brushstrokes and bisque page um, you'll have to go probably to the photos tab and then I think they have a drop down now that says photos or videos um, so it'll be there all the time um, for anybody to watch anytime it was supposed to be in the Brenda's Creative Classroom group, but there's no live tab on there. I don't know where that went. Um, so we just have it on. It's just going to be on the main page, so that's okay, too. Okay, so I'm back around to the front. I kind of got to turn it around here so I, we can get the rest of the hat. So you can, you got to turn those pieces around so you can get your brushes in all the little areas. especially the, the hats on these guys. So we're going to come back along that um, nose again and just do those little that little C stroke here and build that color up a little more because I can still see through it. And then along the hat rim there, or the brim I guess. And it's okay if we get it on the heart, that's not going to hurt anything. Yeah, it won't hurt on the hair either because we'll be doing something with that later. So it's getting there. Getting rid of the rust, making it look nice and burgundy. Or garnet red. Alright, so I can still see through my rust up here, so we want to get another layer on there. You don't want to see the rust through your burgundy, so if you can see the or the rust of your garnet red, you want to come back and give it another layer. So I can see it through here yet, so we want to build that up a little bit more. Yeah, we'll flip it back around here, and it looks like I need some along here yet. You really don't want to see the rust through through that bur that garnet red. You want a nice coverage with the garnet red. And it looks like we can see through it on the rim here yet. We'll build it up just a little bit more. And we got to get underneath that. Got to get underneath that hat there so that's covered up too. All right, so then we will switch now to his to, to his coat. So we'll give him a nice layer of our garnet red here. And where the bigger area is, you can do the back and forth stroke. And then where the beard and the um, hands are, we'll have to be a little more careful. So I'm actually going to turn it. And then I will do my little C stroke along along the beard here. So I start away and then just slowly work towards it. And you can see it slowly gets towards it. So I start away, work towards it. And now we can do our bigger strokes because we got that all covered. Let's 
see. Linda says, I'm new to painting, so I don't understand why the rust gets put on going through. Um, the, so red is, red is a very hard color to get to cover, and, and the rust just helps the red cover better. Some people will use gray. Some people use different different colors. I've just always used rust or terracotta, um, something in that family. Because it that's actually in the red family, so it, it just helps the red um, cover better. Otherwise, you might need even more coats of red to get it to cover. Red red is just one of those colors that um, takes a lot of coats to cover, and and by putting the rust on, it kind of it just it just helps it cover better because it's in the in the red family, and it um, it's like you're halfway there as far as the color value um so you have like the black and then you have the rust and the red instead of going right from black to red it would it would take a lot of coats of red usually to get the red to cover but if you put the rust on there it, it just helps the rust red cover better um, and that's just my personal preference um, so now we have one layer on the front of his coat so now we can get a layer on the back Let's see, Mona says she's loving the brushes. Um, yep, I can add one more set, Mona. Um, the order's not going in until tomorrow, and I'll get a few extra sets, too. Um, so now we're doing our dry brushing on, on the back where his um, coat is. I think this is her arm, so we won't get that with the rust on it. We'll have to. I think we're going to do her in pink, maybe. So again, we have our hand here, so I just do them little strokes. I start away from it and work up towards it. And that way I can see where my um, burgundy or my garnet red is going instead of doing great big brush strokes and then getting it all over those fingers and I have to do them again. Um, I can do the bigger ones here. It's okay if it gets on the flower because we'll be um, doing the flower yet. Oh, Carrie says, can you add a set? Yep, I can do that. I'll go through the messages if you're a boxer, I can um, um, add add them for you. Then they'll ship. You'll have free shipping on your box in your box. So again, I'm going to start away from the um, the hands here, and then I'll just make my little strokes. And then I can so I start away, make the little strokes, and I can see right where the garnet red is going without getting it all over the hand and then where there's more room I can make my big big dry brush strokes that you guys are used to so now we'll let that dry and we'll come back to his front and we'll get another layer on here because I can still see um, rust through it through the garnet red and we don't want, really want to see the rust through the garnet red it's just helping that garnet red cover better so we kind of got to spin him around and we'll do those little strokes over here by the fingers again And by the beard. So that looks pretty good. And I can see rust through there, so we'll cover that up a little bit more. And we'll go back to the back of the shirt again. So again, there's just a layer on there, but I can see my rust through, so I want to give it one more layer. And we'll do our little strokes along the hand here. And we'll turn it, start away from the hand and work towards it. And then the same with the other hand. We'll start away from it and work towards it. And he's looking pretty good.
think we need one more layer on here and on the high areas. Can it get in there by those fingers where there's some white coming through yet? And we got a little bit of skin tone up here on the hat, so we'll just touch that up a little bit. And I can see a little bit of rust here and there, so we're just covering that up yet. Okay, so I think the coats look pretty good in that hat. So now we got to go on to probably her dress and his hat. And let's see. I think we will do raspberry on hers. So I have, uh, or sorry, Royal Fuchsia. It's by Mako SS92 Royal Fuchsia. So we'll shake that up really well. And get uh, some bright pink. And we'll get a new brush because I don't want to have that magenta all over that. Um, so I just have the, so I think I want a round one or a flat one. or We'll go with this size three round because she's got some little areas to get into. We'll put our garnet red brush aside. This is a number three round. I'll probably do her little um, neck, neck lace there with... Um, white, so we'll just brush across this with the pink. Now you could put the rust under this too. I've done done it without it or or with it. It's kind of it kind of takes a lot, no matter what, because we we have the black underneath it. So we'll build up our bright raspberry fuchsia, royal fuchsia color here. And it's okay if we get it on her hair. That's not going to hurt any. And then she's got an arm here. I guess that's her arm. Yeah, is it her arm? I guess it's her arm. She's holding that heart. So we'll get that all full of royal fuchsia too. Uh, hair fell out there. That's not that's natural for a new brush to lose a few hairs. Um, so we'll just work our way around. Get her dress all full of the royal fuchsia. Um, start away from her hand and work towards it, just like we did with the other hands. And the same with the hat. I don't want to do big brush strokes over the hat. Um, so I'll start away from the edge and just work right to where the edge of the hat and the dress arm meet here. And then right up to her hair. And that will come around. We'll make the dress, I don't know, it looks like a top and a bottom, but we're going to make them all one color just to make it go a little bit quicker here tonight. So we'll just work our way right around. And we kind of got our hand over here, so we're going to work our Royal fuchsia around that without getting it all full of the hand. And then I'm going across to where that top of the dress and the bottom meet so we have that black down in our shading, down in our crevices. And then we'll just work our way right around the black back here. I knew this was going to take a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I didn't want to do the little bitty knobs. Then that wouldn't have been enough time either, or it would have taken not enough time. So you guys can always come back and watch it later if you have to leave early. But any, again, anybody that comments will be putting your name in uh, 
writing your names down afterward and I will um, do a drawing and post and then the winner will get this little finished piece. So I'm going along the hat here, just going kind of carefully. And then we can do our bigger strokes on the rest of the dress. Kind of bring it down to the bottom so the bottom looks good. Let me see, did you put any highlights on the hat? Um, nope, not yet. I'm just kind of, um, they got their garnet red on them and that's kind of it so far. We're just dry brushing her little dress here and trying to get that going. We kind of got one layer of the royal fuchsia on. And now we'll come back around the front. And we're going to do her little um, collar with white, I think. So we got, we'll just go right up to it. We don't want to make big brush strokes across the beard, so we're just going to go um, kind of with, with it, starting away from it, and do those little C strokes, and then you can see right where your brush and paint is going. Um, someone else may be, do it different than, than that, but that's how I do it. There's always more, more than one way to do everything when it comes to ceramic stuff, so um, just, just kind of... Try different things and um, you know do what work do what works for you or what makes what's easier for you or let's see so Therese so likes the colors so is the arm in the back his arm or her arm um, I think we decided that was her arm so she probably that probably needs the pink on it too because I think for it to be his arm, it would be kind of bent crooked. So we'll make it her arm. Kind of keep forgetting this arm here. I forgot the hand before, and now I got the forgot the arm. So we want to get our royal fuchsia right up to the hand there. So we'll just do those little strokes again right over the color that's on there, leaving that black that's down in the crevice there. So I don't want to do those great big strokes and get that all over the hand because then I'd have to do the hand over. Kind of the same with the bottom of the sleeve here. We'll do the same thing. We'll, instead of doing big strokes across it, we'll just start away from it and go up to that black that's down in the crevice there. And we want to leave that black down there because that's our shading. So we'll start away from it and kind of start brushing towards it. And it's just little brush strokes that we you can see where your, your paint is going. All right, so now we got a nice layer on there. We'll let that dry and we can go back to our front. And build that up some more. So again, we're going to do, do her little... Um, neckline or her little collar there with white I think so it's royal fuchsia and garnet red that we've been using I think the one at the classroom I did is all it's real red I did most of it in real red the tops and the bottoms or their shirts and their hats so it's kind of nice to see something a little more colorful here Let's work our way around. Again, we want to do those little strokes when we're by the um, skin tone here, or the hand. So dry brushing tends to get uglier before it gets pretty, so um, a lot of people are probably get frustrated at this point right here because, like, the pink, it's taking a lot for the pink to get on there because we have black underneath it. 
Um, but you just keep keep building it up. And slowly but surely it gets there. So again, I'm going to make those little strokes along the hand and along the hat here because I don't want to make big strokes and get it all over the hat. So I have to redo the hat. So just nice little little C strokes. And then you can do the bigger strokes when you have more room. Get some glitter coming on there. So it's coming together. It's just it just takes a little while. So that's where the um, dry brushing kind of takes patience. It's not a fast thing at all. Sort of switch it around here so I can get her sleeves. So again, I'm going to do those little strokes. And along the hand. And then we'll let that dry and come back to the front. So it slowly gets there. Just keep going. That's a little wet when it's shiny like that. That's a little too wet. Just keep going or back from the front to the back. Doing the little strokes along the hand and along the hat here. I think we'll actually go and work on something else and let this pink dry good so it'll take the paint a little better. Um, it's just going to take a lot of layers of, of the pink with the black. So we're going to let that sit and dry a little bit. So we have her pink is coming along. He'll probably have black shoes. I'm not sure about her. Um, we need a hat color for him though. Let's see what kind of hat should we give him. He's got the burgundy-ish burgundy -ish color. Um, let's see. Oh, what color hat do I want? I don't think I want a green one. And I think that's too bright. Anybody got a hat color suggestion? Mm, that's too bright too. Actually, I think I'm going to go with the gray. We're going to do something different. OS474 gray. So we're going to make his hat gray. We're going to get some gray in here. Why not, right? I can't do purple, I can do gray. So, a lot of times you see the grays with the Halloween, or Halloween, oh my goodness, that's the second time I said that, with the Valentine's color, so we're going to go with gray. I think that'll be a nice color to go with the garnet red. We might whiten up his beard a little bit more, though. We'll get our gray on our hat here. And actually, we're going to put the gray right on our daisy so we can put white over that and whiten that up. I 
That is a color I'm dry brushing right now. <laughs> oh, on a manatee. Oh, that's cool. Um, so we're just going to put our gray on here. And we're going to go right over our daisy so we can make that kind of white. I think that's a good color for his coat. It kind of makes her hat stick out a little bit. And then it, with the um, white daisy, that should make the gray stick out a little bit more, too. Now we got to get down in his hat rim and along his nose here. Maybe we'll give him some silver dots or something to kind of brighten it up. So you're painting along while I'm painting, too. That's good. You're learning and and painting at the same time. So we're just going to brush our gray all over our hat here. And our daisies, because then we'll make them white. And so I want to be careful where my garnet red is and where my little arm arms are here. Or his little hand, I should say. So we're just letting our fuchsia dry good because then when we come back, it'll it'll take the color a lot better. It'll just stick on there easier. There's just something about that. So Shirley has a hard time cho choosing colors. Yeah, it was... I kind of had my mind made up for the purple and that bright blue tonight, so it kind of th threw things off. I don't know where the purple and the bright... The purple went on me is the only thing. So we'll we'll just get this daisy covered and then we'll get white on there. Get his hat all grayed up here. I think that'll kind of brighten it up with that dark garnet red. And then we'll have to decide what colors to make their hearts. Maybe silver. Maybe make one of them silver. So back on the back here. I'm just working my way up to the coat where the royal fuchsia is with those little strokes. Anytime I'm going along where there's another color, it's just that you just make little little those little strokes is what I do. make our little strokes here along his hand and then right up or her hand right up to the her coat and then right around to her hat I mean it's just a lot of brushing you just keep brushing and brushing and then just keep building it all up Well, the gray's coming around. I think it'll be all right. It's a nice light, light color. And you see a lot of gray and pink. <coughs> Excuse me, a lot of gray and pink and white with the um, Valentine stuff. So we got to work our way down in that little hat there. And we might have to switch to a littler brush to get around his little hat where it's tying knot with hers there. I was thinking if you had like little red um, or like stickers from like the scrapbooking aisle that were hearts, you could put those on, on the hats. That might be kind of cool. I actually have some little um, scrapbooking embellishments that I won on Friday that I think they're little they look almost like little daisies I think we will put them on um, her hat or on her collar 
So we're just building up our gray here and getting that looking good. Sometimes I get a little too much paint in the brush there because I'm trying to get done so you guys don't want to have to be here till midnight. It was probably a little bit bigger of a project than it should have been for the night, but the video will be here so you can always go back and watch it when you have time. We need some more gray. And just get a little bit at, at a time, work it in your brush on the paper towel and then onto your piece. And right over to the daisy because we're gonna actually make the daisy white so we'll have that gray kind of our middle value of um, color. So it looks like we crushed in. I missed the beginning of the class. Would you mind sharing what kind of brush you're using? The brush is a boar bristle brush. It's a Chung King uh, bristle. It's uh, Royal from Royal and Langnickel. It's called Majestic. Um, this one is a size 5 round. And we're just um, dry brushing our hat here. And I'm using gray. And we're going right over our daisy because we're going to put white on the daisy yet. And so I want that nice um, different values of colors. So we have the black, which is our dark color, and our gray will be our medium color. And then our white will be our lightest value. So we're just getting nice layers of gray on our hat here and on the daisy. Going from the front to the back. That way the, now the front can dry while we're on the back. And I'll probably have to grab a little brush to get into the little areas of that hat. And we just keep grabbing a little bit of paint, wiping it out on my paper towel. Um, some people use coffee filters. Some people use a um, piece of cotton t-shirt. Some people use the brown paper bag, so use whatever works for you. I just usually use the paper towel. That's what I uh, make sure I have. So you can see we're getting our daisy quite gray. We only want a little bit of the black left down in the crevices for our shading. And then we'll come with white over that too. And just brushing uh, more carefully by the fingers and the hat so we don't get the gray all over that. So we have to redo all that again. And we'll do our little C strokes along the rim of the hat here, along the hand and the um, her dress or her arm. And then along the hat where the two hats meet. And then kind of just fill it in. And you can do those bigger strokes there where you have more room. What color will you make her hair? I'm probably going to make it a yellowish color because I think the um, gnomes are usually, kind of, I think they're like a Scandinavian thing. And I think like the Scandinavians kind of have blonde hair. So probably a dark blonde hair. That way it'll kind of stick out really, brings the nice bright yellow to the piece. You can see our gray is starting to build up here pretty good. So we'll keep going. Get some more on our daisy because our daisy is pretty dark yet in a few spots. So if you're not able to finish watching tonight, the video will be on my, on my Facebook page. It'll be saved. Um, I think you have to go to the Photos tab, and then there will be a drop-down that will say Video or Photo. So that is where it should, should be. But you never know, because stuff's always changing. So now we're going to work our way back around to the front. 
I'm going to make sure we get the top here and the top of our daisy. And I'm sure you could make the daisy yellow. You can make yellow daisies or whatever. I was just going to make white just because it's kind of a Valentine's thingy. And we got to get under there. We got to get in our little groove here. It says Pat says I can't. I can watch only, not listen. Can you tell me that brush name in the chat? And thanks for doing this. Um, I I can do that later too. I'll go back through the um message or through the posts and I usually try to answer everyone's questions but it's kind of hard to do that in paint and um, do it at the same time so it's a I'll try to hold it up maybe that'll help so you can see it so. So hopefully that help that will help okay so um, thank you guys for filling that in for her so We'll get our gray covered here so we don't see much black coming through it. Man, when you're wet and shiny like that, that's a little bit, but it's a big flat surface here, so it's really it's okay with that. We'll brush our brush out a little better. And I'll have to get a smaller brush to get in there to get that. I don't want to get it all over my burgundy. Yes, it's a boar bristle, boar bristle brush. Um, a Chung King is the um, bristles. It's like the top of the line bristle. It's C H U N G K I N G. Um, Chung King bristles. They're supposed to be the best best bristles that you can get for dry brushing. So we're just coming along the little nose there and building that up a little more. Um, I'll try to go through the, I might not have time tonight because I do have to pump the slip that I mixed into its buckets yet tonight. and So it might be tomorrow before I do it, but then I'm at the classroom tomorrow. So it might, it, I'll do it so I just can't say when it, when, it, when it will be, but I'll go back through the comments and usually try to w cover everybody. Um, thank you, Gail. So... Um, that, at least that's what the br the brush people tell us that the the Chung King is the best for dry brushing. Um, I, I tend to think so too because it's a nice soft bristle. Um, some people do like stiffer bristles though, so it kind of depends what what you like. But his hat's looking pretty good here. I gotta say, I'm kind of liking it. We don't have much black left on his hat, so that looks good. Um, I think our daisy needs a little bit more here. Um, unfortunately, the closed captioning isn't available on the business pages on Facebook, but it's available on the personal pages, so that's why we don't have um, closed captioning. Courtney had requested it several times, and we just haven't gotten anywhere with it. Um, so I'm just trying to get our little petals here with a little more of the gray on it instead of the burgundy. Um, we used to have closed caption, but I don't, Facebook did something and we, we don't have it anymore, so unfor unfortunately. All right. Oh, I got a big spot right here I missed, so we got to get some more on that. Um, so I'm kind of doing like a S. S or not a S, a C stroke. When I have big flat areas um, like this, I kind of tend to do the C stroke more than a straight straight one. I kind of like the C stroke better for the flat, really smooth areas. Um, but again, that that's all personal preference. You guys got to do what works best for you. But it for me, it seems like it kind of like blends that paint right down onto the surface. All right, let's get our daisy a little bit grayer here. He's not, they're not looking too bad, huh? And let's go to a smaller brush so we can get in, in here. Um, this is a, 
size one. This is a size one. So we'll get us some gray. And now we kind of got to get in that little bitty area where their little um, hats are tangled together. And then we kind of got to bring it right around the back here. Again, I'm just doing them little C-strokes so I'm not getting it all over the burgundy hat or that um, garnet red hat. Hopefully you can see that. To get it on the tip of that his hat here where it's down in there. Okay, we gotta come back and get this other side a little bit more. So I'm just doing little strokes because I don't want to get it all over my burgundy or my garnet red. It's working pretty good with that little brush. Um, that's why I like the flat brushes. You can turn them on their edge and you have, it's almost like you have two, two brushes in one because you can use it flat or you can turn it on its edge and get like right next to stuff. So I kind of have it on its edge here now. Because we really don't want all that burgundy up on his hat. And we'll give it another layer back there so it looks good. Okay, well, it looks pretty good. So, we need a little more around here, around the center there. And maybe just a little more up here because there's a lot of burgundy on his hat. So we're just going to bring that up a little bit closer. There, so that looks pretty good. All right, so for um, the daisy, we'll go to white. Let's see, did we have white in a brush here tonight yet? No. Um, we'll just use our gray brush and go into the white. So let's see, we'll show you it's the white. So we have white. So now we'll go on our daisy and make it white. Starting to get a little more interesting here we got some color going here and there even if it is white and gray um, so what gray is that that was just just gray os474 gray um, oh too much you gotta brush it out so now we have our white going on our daisies and you could have yellow daisies too but i thought since her hair was going to be yellow i wasn't going to do um, a yellow daisy, but you could do different color daisies. That kind of makes the hat stand out a little more too, having the white on, on there. Now we'll go to the back. Um, so for anyone that joined late, any, any comments, I will go, go through the comments later and I will write, anyone that commented, they'll write your name down. And then I'll um, draw from the names of everyone that commented. And then the winner will get the piece that I'm painting tonight. So that's kind of our little giveaway. It's going to be the painted piece. So um, if I have your address, I won't need it. But if I don't, um, if you haven't gotten a box or something, then you'll have to message me with your address because um, businesses can't message you first. You have to message us first. I'm you know, just the way what Facebook does so people don't get spammed with um, businesses. So I'll post um, who the winner is in the comments and then you can just private message me your, your address and we'll send this little beauty off to you. And it probably won't be till Wednesday because I have um, class hours tomorrow. 
So I won't be able to get to the post office tomorrow, but it'll go out Wednesday then. So we're just getting our white on our daisy here. And you want to make sure you get the edge, the edge as well. So I kind of turned it on edge here so we can get the edge. So we'll build up our white so that it really sticks out. So another good thing with um, white is that if you want something really pure white to save a set, set of brushes or a couple brushes with just white for just white, uh, because even though I'm using white paint, this brush has gray in it, so it's not going to be a 100% pure white. Um, so I usually do save a brush or two just for white. And that will make your, if you only use that for white, then it's never stained with another color. Because it seems like no matter how well you clean them, when it comes to white, it'll kind of take on that hue of, an, of another, of that other color that's been in that brush. Let's see, are you selling this piece? It's really cute. Actually, I'm going to give, give this piece away when we're done tonight. We're going to, um, anyone that commented, their name's going to go in the drawing and um, someone's going to win it. So I thought that would be a good good little thing. Um, let me see, what, what, what color pink did you use? The pink I used was Royal Fuchsia from Mako. It kind of goes, the Royal Fuchsia goes really good with the um, Garnet Red. And it, it needs more of the Royal Fuchsia yet, but we kind of let, we're kind of letting that dry. And then we'll come back to it to build it up. It just kind of works really good with the colors if you let them dry in between sometimes, especially the pinks. All right, so we have our white daisies. We're actually going to go back to our Royal Fuchsia, so we'll see if we can get that built back up so it looks a little better. Um, so I'm just going back to my Royal Fuchsia with the brush that I had before. And we're going to build that up. So now that's dried and it should go on a little bit, little bit better than it was. So, and then we want to go underneath. It takes a lot to get the Royal Fuchsia um, to cover too, just a lot of dry brushing because I actually did the puddle bunny with the Royal Fuchsia and it took a lot of a lot of dry brushing to get that um, Royal Fuchsia built up. But once it once it starts coming it you can get it. And that's why I like to just let it um, dry and then come back to it. Because we don't want to see all that black coming through it. Um, so like now there's a lot of black coming through it and we really don't want that. So we're just going to um, come back to it and we'll probably go and do something else and come back to it again. Um, that's where I say like the reds. So really the Royal Fuchsia is in, in the red family, but I didn't really like the rust underneath it. Um, so it's just going to take extra layers of it to get it nice and bright. So we'll just keep going around here and get that built up. It'll probably go a little bit heavier even and more of a wet brushing just to get that to cover so we're not here all night. Because it, it does take a lot of coats to get the that pink to come nice and bright with good coverage with that black underneath it. But we'll get her. So are you having your painting classes on Monday now? Um, nope, this was just a special um, free class on because it's Valentine's. Um, the box group is closed now and I, I didn't want to exclude everyone. Um, so I'm going to still try to do some free classes. I just, it just won't be as um, scheduled like every Thursday like it was. It'll be um, whenever, whenever I can squeeze something in. And I just thought with Valentine's Day it would be a good, good little day to paint tonight. So, so we just have a free class here tonight. Gonna get our royal fuchsia built up here. 
doing little strokes along the other colors so I'm not getting them all over. We're getting the royal fuchsia all over the other colors, I should say. So we are going to come back and do it one more time, and then I'll go and work on the hair. And then we can probably do another couple layers of the fuchsia. Um, just so we're not here all night. Paper towel is shedding the way it looks. Let's just get another layer of our royal fuchsia on, and then we'll go to her hair. Oh, you forgot it was Valentine's Day. Oh, my goodness. You have to treat yourself if you don't have someone to treat you. I treated myself to a um, mint shake the other day. It was kind of early, but I wanted one. I had to go to Arby's because McDonald's didn't have them yet. Okay, so we have another couple of layers of fuchsia, and it's going to take a couple more. So we'll go to her hair color. And let's see, what are we going to start with? I'm looking for gold or curry. I have curry, so that's what I'm going to use. Gold works too, um, but I'm going to use curry, OS571 curry. Let's see, we'll give that a shake up. So you can have gold or curry, um, then we'll highlight it with some yellow. I don't see my gold, so we're just going to use the curry. And let's get some more paper towel here. And we're going to go with, this is a size, um, this one's a size one. So we'll go with our gold. So I don't want her to have real blonde hair, but we're going to highlight it with some lighter stuff. And so I want to go across all her little braids, so you got um, kind of got to use a littler brush so you can go the different directions. So, yeah, the, um, I like the McDonald's mint shakes but they didn't have them so I went to Arby's and they have the Andes mints in the mint shakes and it's really good too but I still kind of like the McDonald's one a little better so I left McDonald's and went to Arby's so we're just painting our curry or we're actually dry brushing our curry on our little braids here because I think the gnomes are a Scandinavian thing and I think the Scandinavians are all usually blondish. I know I'm I'm Norwegian. I'm, it's not quite Scandinavian but I kind of have blonde hair. But I have German too so that's brown hair I believe. So we'll get some curry on here, or if you have gold, gold will work too. I just couldn't find the gold in the cart. I have to look at my colors. I must have hauled them out for something, and they're not in here. Because they all should be in here. So that's a little much. you got to brush that brush out. Again, I'm just doing those little strokes to bring it up to the hat and not get it all over the hat. Let's see, Gail's hubby is Norwegian and German too. Yep, I'm Norwegian and German. <coughs> One set of gra <coughs> excuse me, gra <coughs> excuse me, I have to take a drink. One set of grandparents were Norwegian and the other set was German. So But I think I read something about the gnomes being Scandinavian. So and I don't know if that means Norway and exactly or what I'll have to take a look at that maybe one day or maybe is that like the Dutch and the Danish and stuff I'm not sure <laughs> that's a good one Gail <laughs> uh, 
So we're getting our hair with our curry, but like I said, you could use gold if you have gold. I just, I couldn't find the gold in the cart, so I'm using the curry. Oh, and she's got some hair on the back, so we want to make sure we get that too. I was going to try to make, put, use the extruder and um, pour Finn and put braids on him, but then I realized he's got a mustache, so I don't think it would, or he's got a whole beard. I don't think that would work um, so well turning him into a girl with a beard. So that, that plan is out. You'd have, have, have to have a lot of long hair to cover up the beard, I guess. But I was thinking maybe I could give him some braids and it, then it would look like a girl, but considering he's got a beard, I don't think that little plan's going to work. So she's getting her little gold hair here. Kind of rushing a little bit, you guys, so it's not take don't take too long, but like I said, you can always um, come back and watch the video later. It'll be on our my page, Brenda's Breaststrokes and Biss. So All right, we'll go back to the front and give that another layer so you can see how that dried. Um, so it'll actually take a nice layer of paint again. Just just letting it dry those few minutes. Um, while you're doing the back is really a big help. Let me see. So it says Scandinavia is Denmark, Norway, and Sweden. Okay. Well, now we all know. So I guess that's where the blonde stuff comes in then with the with the gnomes. So that's looking pretty good. We got it right up to her hat. Get just the black down in the crevices. We just got to get our um, royal fuchsia built up some more. So I'm just kind of go with each each little braid section to go across it. So I'm kind of going up and down here and kind of a, the other direction with the other ones. So you kind of have to dr change directions with each each little braid section. I was going to do some trivia for tonight, but I didn't have time to do it. So let's see. Um, I'll have to, um, I'll have to, you can message me, Blanca. So we, we're, I'm actually only selling to my subscribers that are getting the box. And right now the subscription is closed because I'm um, full. I'm at the most that I can um, ship in a month because my daughter was helping me and she has stepped down so there's been some changes with the business um if you want i can put you on on the wait list and if there is an opening then you can um get in the subscription again and then you can purchase bisque when we when i have the add-on bisque sale otherwise it's only for the bisque box subscribers because i i don't have time i have i'm not able to even keep up with them uh, but if you send me a message, I can. We can talk about it. I guess I'm not. Not exactly sure. I think we had a bis sale, and you and you weren't a subscriber, and you wanted something. I'm not sure. So you want to get the kit. So I, if if you want to mess, um, if you want to message me your email address, I'll put you on the list. And if someone drops off, then I I'm, I will go through the list and, and I can message you that there's a, an opening. Um, otherwise, I was going to do um, like open enrollment every quarter, which would be like for in March for April. But only if there's openings um, until I get better at shipping and invoicing and learning all that stuff that I, I had to learn that my daughters um, used to do. And it, it is getting better, so we'll have to see how things go. Um, but I did have COVID too um, the last two weeks, so it's kind of been a kind of got behind here now and kind of play, playing catch up a little bit. So, but it is getting better. So hopefully I can um, eventually add more people back in. Okay, so now her little um, braids look pretty good. So I want to highlight them a little bit. 
So I think we're going to use, oh, here's, here's my gold that I didn't see. So we could use gold to highlight it, or we could use some yellow. So I think I'm just going to use the gold because it's a little bit brighter than the curry. So I have the gold OS436 gold, and we're just going to highlight her little hair a little bit. So we'll get just a little bit of that. <clears throat> Go into the gold, and I'm just using my same dirty brush, so I have just a gradual change of color. Brush it out really good, and now I'm just going to go across our little braids a little bit and kind of yellow them up a little bit to highlight them. And so you have to change direction with the... So you're going across the lines that are in, in her hair. Get some more. Go back to the back and highlight the back. Back to our yellow or gold, I should say. And we'll get a little more and come back to the front. So you can see by letting it dry, your color just starts um, building up as you keep going back and forth. Oh, that's cool that you have that have them. So now you can even go back and um, watch the video if you missed like the first part of it. Or if you want to paint along and like you could stop it and start it. So we'll go back to our gold and come back to the back. Just highlight that hair a little bit more. Okay, and then we'll probably go back to our fuchsia again and see if we can build that up some more. And then we're, we're getting pretty far. We just have our hearts in the center of our... Whoop, no, I just went in the gold with it. That ain't good. That's going to make an ugly color. We'll get her little fuchsia here with another layer on it. And you can see the... Um, so the fuchsia is taking a, a lot to cover it, and so that... Um, like someone asked why they put the red ru rust under the red. Well, that's why I put the rust under the red because I would have the same problem with the um, red. It would have took forever to get the red to cover, kind of like it's taken forever to get the um, fuchsia to cover. I probably could have put the garnet red and then put the fuchsia over it, but then my fuchsia would have been a little bit darker and I kind of really wanted it nice and bright. Um, it's it's getting there. It just takes a little patience. So, yeah, the um the COVID it, it's been two two weeks. I think it was two weeks on Thursday, but I still got this cough and I still got congestion and still tired. But it, it's certainly better than it was. And I seem to kind of have a brain brain fog too actually a little bit it seems so I hope I don't get it back again because I really don't want it so let's get us some fuchsia here um, so you just base coat black I, I did just base coat this piece black um, I don't always base coat black it kind of it kind of depends Um, this piece I did though. Um, you you could paint this piece too, and, and not base coat it black and dry brush it. You could just paint it. I I kind of like the dry brushing because you get all the nice shading down in the all the different little um, crevices. You can see our um, fuchsia is starting to build up here pretty good now. It's getting a lot more solid in color. So we'll do it a couple more times and then we should, we'll be pretty good, I think. Okay. 
Now we got to decide what color shoes she should have. I think he can have black shoes. Looks like I got a hair down in there. So it's it's getting there. The, the royal fuchsia, you can see, it just just takes a lot of lot of layers. Um, so we'll <clears throat> let it sit again. And I think we'll go to the center of our daisy. COVID brain is a real thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, well, it's it really seems like it because um, sometimes I can't think of anything. I ordered molds and couldn't remember what I ordered. <laughs> ordered molds for our boxes that are coming up in May and June and September and like, could not remember for the world of me what I ordered. So it's kind of kind of weird. All right, so now I have some medium green. I want to put a little bit of medium green on the center of our daisies. I kind of like green centered daisies, so that's just kind of me. Um, I have a round size three um, royal dry brush. Um, so we're going to just kind of dry brush the center of this guy with our green. And just doing little strokes so that I don't get it all over my petals. It's a very similar to chemo brain. Hmm. I can't imagine. I, ho I hope it clears up. We're just getting our medium green on the center of our daisy and we'll get it on the back side too. Just adds a, a nice bright color to our little um, holiday piece here, I guess you could call it. Now I just got some of the green on the white, but I can go back and um, touch that up. Get a little more green on the this one. And we'll come back and get a little more on this one. And then I think I need some white because I have green on my white. It gets better. Okay, that's good. I'm just going to brush white on my petals here where I got green on them. So you want to go back and touch things up if you really gob it up and make it ugly. The front looks okay. And now I actually want a touch of yellow on that. So we're going to go with pale yellow, OS433, pale yellow. And we just need a drop of that. And I'm going to use my... Um, hair brush because it's got the yellows in it and we're just going to brush that out good and I just want to put a little bit of um, just kind of dabbing it so that there's like little little yellow seeds in there um, kind of like flowers have their little seeds I'm not really dry brushing it I'm just kind of dabbing it with the brush just to give it another little texture and we'll do the same on the other side I'm just kind of dabbing it up and down to make it look like it's got little seedy center and not really dry brushing it. So we have the green and the yellow in there, so that was the pale yellow. So it's just dabbed instead of dry brushed. All right, so now we got a nice little green and yellow daisy here going on. Looks like I got another hair in there. There. Okay, so we have our hearts left. We have our shoes left. We Oh, we have our green daisy stems over here. Um, so for that, I'm going to start with a dark one. I am Accent Green 57 from Soft Mako Softy. 
So we'll get a little bit of that. Go back to my green brush. And we'll work that dark green in there. Catch that guy. Um, so now we want to get our daisy stems over here with the dark green. And we don't want to get it all over here, the hand, so we're going to just make little brush strokes here again. And all over the, we don't want it all over the outfit. So it's kind of kind of coming together here a little bit. We'll just get our dark green on our daisy stem. Now my bottom is not the prettiest. I usually would bring my burgundy right around. Um right to the center hole. Same with the fuchsia. I'd have brought it right around, but to save time, I, I didn't do that tonight. I, I usually like to paint paint my bottoms too, so they look nice. So if someone picks them up and looks at them, it looks nice. I mean, I can come back and touch that up with the black and still make it look nice. Um, but I didn't want to waste too much time on just working on the bottom. bottom. All right, so we have our accent green on our daisy. Um, now I'm going to go to the medium green. Kind of with my same brush, brush that out a couple times so we can highlight our um, daisy stem just a little bit. So that just gives that more, more shape to it by adding just that little bit of medium green to it. So that's the medium green. Let me show you the medium green. And that way you got your dark, medium, and light colors again. So that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, so that looks good. We have her white collar, so I'm probably going to just paint her collar white. Um, so we have our white OS431 white. And I'll go to a nylon painting brush. It's a size one. And I just want to paint paint the little collar in so it looks really nice. Um, this would have been one of the brushes that was in, in your boxes, so you should have this brush if you're a boxer. We're kind of getting down to the little detail stuff now. So we just want to uh, kind of look look like that old-fashioned lace um, eyelet type of collar, so that's why I thought I would just um, paint it white. You could dry brush it if you wanted, but I just thought it'd be a lot easier just to paint it. So you can mix painting with your dry brushing. You don't have to just dry brush. Oh, she's got her fancy little collar. Kind of brought her to life. Give her more color there. So it looks pretty good. Just a little white collar made a big difference. And then I think we'll give him some we got to decide on what we want our hearts to be, you guys. Uh, we want white or do we want silver? Do we want red? Uh, I think we'll give him white ones. And I'm just going to paint them, too. You could dry brush them, but I'm just going to paint them. Just paint them with the white. Might take a couple coats. And you want to brush that so it's nice and smooth. It's 
So when I'm painting, I'm resting this painting hand on my piece, and I have my piece on the table so it's nice and steady. So, oh, I'm um, thank you, Blanca. I'm glad we glad we did it. Um, I want to want to try to do it at least once a month, so we'll have to see. Hopefully, I can um, keep fitting it in, and it may be different different days and different times, but um, the videos will be there to watch. So even if you you're working or something and you can't make it, then the videos will still be there. So now we're going to do our last little heart on his beard in white. And I'm just painting them. You could dry brush them if you wanted. It's totally up to you. I kind of like painting them because it gives them nice sharp lines. And then you kind of got to turn it around and um, so you can get whatever is easiest to, for you to paint. I like to pull that brush towards me and again I'm resting that painting hand on my piece so it's nice and steady. And they're, they're not real even um, hearts. They're kind of, they're not like perfect hearts. They're just kind of little, little, cute little hearts. So we'll get them with one layer. I brought mine with me, so I'll be painting soon. Oh, good. Oh, that's right, because you're down in, um, you're, you're snowbirding. So that's good. So I'm just going to come back now and give my white another layer because I can see through my white and we really don't want to see through our white. We want nice, good, good, solid coverage. So we'll give it another coat. You can see then that second coat, you, you really can't see through it now and that just looks a lot nicer. And I'm just using a nylon brush. I usually use a nylon brush when I'm painting um, detail items, detail things like this instead of the... Um, using the boar bristle brush, the nylon brushes will give you a lot smoother um, finish without brush marks versus the, um, I've seen people try to paint with the dry brushes and, and you just get a, you get more brush marks, I guess you could say, with those. At least that's what I've found. Um, so now we'll give another coat on our hearts here. And I think we'll do that heart with white too. We'll kind of trying to keep my hand out of the way so you guys can see. So now my hand is in the middle of the air, and I don't normally do that. I usually try to have it resting on on the piece that I'm um, painting on. It like now I have my little finger on there. That that's just enough to um, help you with get a straight line. So we'll, we got to get the back here. So we're, we're getting there. We're, um, we're not done, but we're getting there. So I just really like to rest that, that finger of that painting hand on on that piece it just helps me steady that hand up I'm trying to make it so you guys can see and not just me get a nice layer on there Brush it out. And we'll come back and her collar needs just a little bit more. We'll let that big heart dry. And then this one I think we'll do something different with. Uh, let's see, what should we do? I think we'll do some metallic silver. So I have the metallic silver UM956. So we'll 
brush that on there. I think we'll put white in the center, maybe. It's getting harder to hold so I don't get my fingers in the paint and get, get it all full of paint here. The wrong color's in the wrong spot. We'll just put some silver on the outside one, and I think, we'll have to see, do we put white or red in the center? Well, the silver, the metallics usually take a couple layers, too, or a couple coats. We'll kind of turn it so we can get all the little areas here. You can see we dry brushed um, most of the piece, but now we're doing some of the detail work with just painting with our nylon brush. Um, so you don't have to just dry brush something. It can be it can have painted stuff too. Um, so I guess if a person had time, like you could do her fingernails and put little hearts on them and you could actually get kind of fancy with, with things, make it look really cute. So I do like the Royal Fuchsia with the Garnet red. I mean, my part would be glitter on them. Yeah, I think we'll, we're going to do some glitter too yet. So, whole... Stick with us. We'll get some glitter on here too yet tonight. I'm not sure what I have in my cart for glitter because most of it's at the classroom, but I'm guessing there's something in there we can um, use. We got glitter on there, or we got silver on there. Let's wash out our brush, and we'll go back and get some white on here because it needs a little more white. And I think I got too much water in my brush here. Now you could paint hat stripes on the hats. There's a ton of things you could do with these hats too yet. Um, anything from stripes to hearts, you could paint hearts on them. Um, I think we'll do a few dots quick. Um, we should probably do something with this heart here. We'll probably make this one red, white too. I guess we'll make all the little hearts white to kind of go together. see the hearts would be pretty with glitter yep I think we need some glitter yet I'm just not sure what's in the cart there so we'll get our hearts red and then even if you had like the little um, gemstones you could put little gemstones on her um, collar that would be kind of cute too kind of give her like a little pearl necklace or something I gotta touch this guy up here where I had too much water in my brush. We'll have to touch that up with glitter, maybe. Okay, oh, and then we forgot our little hair bands, too. So I think we'll do those with some silver. She's got little, um, twisty ties here in her hair and I got too much water in my brush. Gotta wipe that out and wipe that out. Okay, so now we'll put the silver on her hair bands here.
I'm just painting the silver on the hair band, the little hair twisties. So they're starting to get lots of little character. And she's got a twisty on the back. And we'll <clears throat> put some more. I got too many paints here, you guys. Put some more silver on the heart in front here. So we have a nice layer and we're not seeing the black through it. You could do like checker checkerboard on the hat or like the buffalo plaid on the hat. You could do stripes. You could do polka dots. You could paint little hearts. Um, you could have little embellishments. Little um, like little crystals. There's just a ton of things you could do with these guys. You could make them all different. We'll jazz up one of their hats here in a bit. We want to get our metallic on there and paint it out nice. Okay. Wash that brush out again. And we'll come back to our white. We have to touch this card up. Hopefully I'm in the screen and you guys can see. We're getting there. Maybe a little more white up there. We can see through it a little bit. And I think we'll actually make this get the rest of these hearts in white so they're all kind of the same. And then she's got a heart on the back. Let me see pink and dark gray on his on his hat. Yeah, I'm thinking that we gotta do something. So we'll get our hearts all white here. So we'll let our hearts dry and we'll um, touch up our shoes. I think I'm going to let their shoes black. I kind of like, like the black shoes <clears throat> for both of them. You could actually, um, after you seal it, you could put gloss, brush on, sealer on those shoes and make them like patent leather shoes. I don't even know if that's something that people wear today anymore, but uh, we're just going to use our black and go over the shoes here to line them back out, get the other colors off of them. They kind of seem like they should have black shoes the way it looks to me. So sorry about that. I didn't put my phone on silent. I didn't think of it till I got going and didn't want to touch it so that it, um, I shut it off because that about what would happen. So we're just kind of touching up the shoes where all the other colors are on it so they look nice and sharp. And we'll do hers as well. I think she's okay with black shoes too. Um, you could paint the shoes too if you wanted to paint them instead of. Um, dry brushing them, but I'm just kind of dry brushing them, getting the other colors off. Now their shoes look nice. Look at that. They're coming around, you guys. Starting to look, starting to look good. So this is where I would, um, I would just touch up my bottom just to make it nice with the black. Um, since I didn't paint the bottom. 
Um, but I, I won't do that. But that's what I that's what I would do just to make that bottom look good. Okay, so back to our piece here. Well, we have that heart. We'll get this heart white too, I guess. Um, probably put some glitter on it or something. So I'm kind of liking the the pink with the that garnet red. It looks like a lot, lot of color, a lot of color to it. Not sure about this white with the silver though. You really can't see the heart. Maybe we'll put some silver glitter on the center. So sometimes when you paint something you don't like it, then you can paint it again. So no, nothing wrong with that. Um, which I probably would with that white heart because it's kind of lost. Kind of lost there. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. Okay, so let's brush that out. Actually, we need a little more white on her thing here because it's a little too... Needs another coat. All right, so now we should probably jazz them up a little bit. Let's see, what should we do? Connie says, pink and dark gray plaid on his hat. Oh, Connie, really? You are um, giving... I was just going to do polka dots, but we can do some plaid. See if I got a flat brush here that we can do some plaid with. I do not have a flat brush. I like to do plaid with a flat brush. I don't have a flat brush in my bucket though. So, what are we going to use? I guess we'll use this. We'll just use a round brush. Um, I have a number five round. So we want some plaid, she says. Polka dots are good too. Um, well, we'll do some plaid. Let's get our color do we want first. We'll go with the dark gray first. I'm going to add a drop of water to it here. I wish I had a flat brush though. Um, so if you had your thin in shade, you could add that to the to your um your color that you're gonna do special stuff with, like the plaid, so that it um, flows better, but we'll, I have ash is what I'm using, ash OS567, so we'll just do, see what we can do here. So when you're doing a plaid or any kind of stripes or anything, you want to go with the curve of the, um, of your piece, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna wing it, you guys, because I don't have a flat brush, so. It's just um, whatever size brush you want to do. We'll do some stripes here. And then we're going to bring it right around the back. Just kind of press it even, evenly on my brush. So I kind of have the same type of um, width of band. Um, a, a flat brush works a lot better for that because you can just go with the flat brush. But we'll get it with our plaid, with our round one. And I have just a little bit of water in my um, in my ash so that it'll flow off the brush a little bit easier. So we got to touch this up here. So you kind of got to touch up a little bit. If something's not lined up quite right. You could also put tape down and then go with the tape. But we're just going to freehand it. And make sure I'm in the screen here so you guys can see. I'm just kind of making the same, trying to get the same distance. Between the stripes and then the width of the stripes. Or our plaid, whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going with the, the curve of the of the piece. Because you wouldn't want just a straight 
a straight line you want to have that curve so it gives your hat shape so there we got that one and now we'll we'll just keep coming around here and sometimes you turn it and turn it so now I want to get about that same distance up here trying to keep that curve going and now my one's a little higher than the other one so we're just going to kind of meet them up Well, that one ain't the best, but it's okay. So we'll do another one. So you could you could tape these off. That's normally what I do, but I'm pretty sure I don't have any tape here. That way they'd be more of the same distance apart, but just to give you guys the idea of how to do it. And then I think we need one more. probably had that turn where you couldn't see it but I was trying to see underneath here and then you can go back and make them wider or thin um, you know just so they kind of all kind of match up or straighten out lines don't have to be perfect and then I think we need one more right here And we got to make sure we don't get our fingers in them. Yep, tape tape works really well, Gail. I use the um, like the blue painters tape or the green painters tape. But we're just kind of going with it tonight because I I know it's at the classroom and not here. And then we probably need another one back here in this little area. You just kind of want them evenly, evenly spaced. Um, it does work better with the tape. But we'll make it work. Straighten this guy out a little bit. Straighten him out a little bit. Okay, I think we need a little water in there. So now I think we should go with another color, Connie, you think, or what? Uh, maybe the other gray now. We'll go with the darker gray. Now we're going to go with charcoal. We'll get a little drop of water in there, mix it up. Or if you have the thin-in shade, that works really well. Okay, so now we're going to try to go up. So I would probably start more in, in the center here. That way I can kind of come down because that hat's got a curve. So we don't want just straight. straight. We kind of want them to come with the curve of the hat. So we're gonna, just going to start right there. And then we probably want it a little wider. And 
And we probably want it to come down under the lip here. And then we'll need it to come up here and join up with that one. It's because you want to have that those stripes kind of having the, the shape of the fabric or the shape of the hat. So we got to come around here. Just bring it around the back. All right. Now we got to add a few more. So we'll probably come across the top and come down now. Come right down around. And if we run into the flower, then we kind of got to stop and pick up. So we want to get this a little bit wider, I think. And we want to get the little hook out of there. And we'll bring this down underneath the two. So now we got to come and look at the back so I can fix it up here where I kind of lost or stroke. There. <clears throat> So now we would probably need another one over here, probably about right here. So even though it's just a little area, you want to put that in there. Now we have that one in there. And then we're going to need one to come underneath here. So... Probably go about right here and come about right there. Whoop. And sometimes your piece moves and you got to adjust your lines. So we'll just kind of straighten it out here. So he's got the curved hat, so that makes it a little bit harder. But if you had have, have tape, like you could just line it out and not do it free-handed. But I don't have tape, so we're not going to, we can't do it with tape and make it all perfect. But just to kind of show you guys what something you can do. And then we got to take it up. The thin white strip. Yep, that's all you'd have to do. Um, I, I I don't have any tape here tonight to do that, so we're just gonna freehand it. We gotta bring our stripe right up to our um, top here. And then we gotta get in there and touch that up. I was going to do dots, otherwise I probably would have grabbed um, tape, but that's okay. We're going to get it. So now we need another one coming down here. Probably start out a little bit thinner and then just get a little bit wider. And we won't set him in the plate so he gets a bath of color. And then we're going to need another one just 
to kind of even even this out here. We kind of got to figure out where to start with it. I guess I've never seen the tape. Oh, yeah, you just like you would put the tape like I use put the tape down and then use the tape for the next width and not put it there and then put the tape then lay the tape for the width and and then put the tape and then you you type you paint where the the tape isn't. Um so we're just going to kind of make these two go together here. So we kind of have to go in in the flower petals here a little bit to go around them. And then we'd probably have it coming down here. Like I'd, I'd probably spend a lot more time doing this if I um, was like painting it as an order for somebody. But we're just trying to do a little freak painting tonight. and So there he's got his little, um, little bit of a plaid hat going on. So let's see if we can get a little bitty, uh, I think some little pink line in there yet. Just to add a little more color. Uh, let me see, I probably want a liner brush for that. Okay, I have my little 20O liner, and I'm going to dip in the water and thin out my pink a little bit. And then we're going to add a little, I think a little pink line here going one way or the other. We'll just add that in between here. And then we kind of got to turn him any which way to get get to where we need to go put another one in here So I'm just using a liner to put in a, li a little line. I didn't want a big, big fat lines of pink. I just want a little bit of pink in there. And you just kind of go around it with the, the shape of the piece. So got a little wide there, but that's okay. Honey, what time is it? So I gotta be careful here now not to get my fingers in the pink. But I'm just going in between my pink or my gray, um, my gray checkers or plaids, whatever you want to call them. So there's not, nothing exact about it, it's just kind of going with the flow and you don't want to know. <laughs> uh, it's probably 10 o'clock, huh? I still have to get a clock for in here. I'll have to do that before Thursday. I mean, I knew it wouldn't be just a two-hour thing, that this was going to take a little while. But like I said, you guys can always um, pick it up and, and watch it later. 10.50 in Michigan. Oh, boy. So it must be 9.50 here then. Well, that ain't too bad. Three hours to um, kind of paint up something. I, know, I knew it wasn't a little piece to paint. 
Um, but he's looking kind of good with his little stripes. Or his little plaid. Now we'll have to jazz her up a little bit. Um, so I'm just using a liner brush. This is that 4200L that we, um, you guys, some of you were able to get last in your box. Because we were able to get them in. Um, but I'm just like resting my painting hand on my piece and going with our paint. Uh oh. Like I said, if it was an order, like I'd be taking a lot more time and being more more exact. But I'm just trying to kind of show you guys how to do something different. So you can see I'm going with the with the curve of the hat. I'm not making it a, a straight a straight line. And sometimes you get a little out of line, and you got to kind of make it all a little bit wider. But that works too. So now we need one more line coming around the round here, I think, so it isn't so blah at the bottom. Trying not to get my hand in wet paint though, so You can see that line has that curve to it again, kind of like the curve of the hat. So. All right, that looks pretty good. He almost looks like he needs them going vertical yet, too. So what the heck, right? Like, it's already almost 10 o'clock. What's the difference? So we'll fill those in, going the other way, too, here. Make him really snazzy. Yeah, I've stayed up all night painting if I had a craft show the next day and needed to get stuff done. Thanks for a long day, but we do what we got to do, right? So I'm just putting lines in, in between pr prior lines. That's really all I'm doing. Well, that one probably is going to need some cleanup later because I kind of smeared it all, but that's okay too. Now we got to get one in between here. So I'm just breaking it down and going line in between line, kind of going with the curve of the hat. That one got a little wide, but that's okay. Can't sweat the small stuff, right? And we'll get one in between here. And then we probably got to get a couple in between in the back, which I could do that. I could do the back later. Um, we can get going and get something else done for you guys to see. But I would just do the same on the back, going between, and then... That'll look good. I need to touch up the white here because I can um, see through it. Too much water in my brush. Touch up our hearts so we don't see through them. And then I think we could probably put some little dots on her little um, her little outfit here. Maybe we could use the garnet red to bring that color into her dress. And I got a ball stylus the way it looks, so I like to use the ball styluses for the dots. So we'll just put our garnet red and give her some cute little dots in her little 
um, collar here. We can jazz her up a little bit. So now she's got some dots too. And then I think we can maybe put a few dots on her. I don't know if that's too many though. Do you guys want dots on her hats? On her hat a little bit? I'm not sure if that's not too much. Anyone want dots on the hats? Maybe just a little row of them. How's that sound? We can go with some pink, I think. <clears throat> Well, let me get my fuchsia. No, oh, everybody says no dots on the hat. No, no, no. Splatter it. Uh, I don't think we can splatter it without getting everything splattered full. Uh, I kind of like something pink on the hat, though. Let's see, what can we do? Dot, yes, dots, yes. Oh, heck, let's do dots, right? right? Why not? Um, maybe we'll just do them in a nice, even, we won't overdo it. How's that? We'll just make little dots. Move that out of the way here. I'm just using a ball stylus, and they, they come with different size heads on them. You can use the ends of your um, brushes if, if they have round handles. Um, you can use those mandala. The mandala tools work really well for doing dots, too. Oh, that adds a lot to her. I think that looks good. It's not too much. It's just a little, just a little bit. around the back quick long as we're the dots go pretty quick okay they're liking the dots huh now you could paint flowers on those hat on the hat too if you wanted it just there's just not enough time for all the different stuff you could do I got some Um, you could paint her fingernails pink, I suppose. We could, you could do that, too, or paint hearts on them. Um, so I think that would probably be about all I would do. And I got white over here, pink over here. Um, I think we need some glitter or something on there, though, so hold on. Let's see what I have in my cart, you guys. I got some silver glitter. I got some purple black glitter. I have some tinsel glitter. I think we are going to kind of like, even though it's Halloweenish, it's that black glitter. It kind of goes good with that gray and stuff. I think I'm going to do that. So let's use some of our Aileen's glue that we got in our box. Or you can use the brush on um, sealer. And I guess I need to open this. All right, so we have that. So I'm going to take my brush and just brush some of the Aileen's glue on here. Or you can use the brush on sealer, the matte, or the gloss, really whatever you want to do. So we have a nice layer of that on there. And I think we're going to go with this um, purpley black stuff just to give it a pop of color. How's that? 
so that will dry clear and I think we'll go up here on the on this top one too so hopefully I'm in the screen you guys can still see again I'm just putting the Aileen's glue on but you could use the if you have brush on sealer that's what I use most of the time Um, seal your piece before you do this. I um, I didn't do that because I don't want to stink the house up, but seal your piece before you do do your glitter. I, I usually do that. Some people do it after, so it's kind of up to you what you want to do. I normally do it after, or I normally seal it before the glitter. Okay, here we go with the purple stuff. I think that looks pretty good. I almost think she needs some on her little hair bands too, you guys. So let's do her little hair bands. Her little twisties here. Maybe we'll switch that up and put some silver on there. So we have a question, how warm does it need to be used to need to be to use the spray sealer outside? I actually use it year round um, outside here as long as the wind isn't um, blowing and blowing it away. Um, I just usually step outside and then step back inside with it. Unless it's like 30 below, then I don't. Um, And I don't I don't think we should put glitter on on his. What do you guys think? You want glitter on his little hearts? I'll put some glitter on her um band here in the back while you guys are letting me know if you want glitter on his hearts on his beard. I don't know if those should have glitter on them. So now she's got glitter back there. Just not sure about having glitter on his, his though. What do you guys think? Nope. Yeah, I don't think so either. Um, so there she is. I think it looks pretty good. I will um, finish the stripes on the back and touch it up because I kind of got some stuff all over here. So I'll probably have to do that Wednesday. I'll go through the comments and everybody that um, commented, I will put your name in a drawing. And you will be the winner of this little character that we painted up tonight. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the little free Valentine's party <coughs> class. <coughs> Excuse me. Give us some thumbs <coughs> Excuse me, hearts or likes or something. Um, I'll probably go back and put a little more of the um, Royal Fuchsia on hers. Just because I, I can see through it a little bit and I'd like a little more color on that. We could actually put white dots on hers too if you if you if we wanted. I'm not sure if we want white white dots. We don't want to overdo it either. Um, I think once his pink stripes get back back here and it's sealed, looks pretty good to me. Um, so I think that's about it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the class tonight. Um, I'll take a picture when it's all done and post it, and then I'll post who the winner is too. Um, but I probably won't get to that until Wednesday because I do have class tomorrow. But thanks, Connie, for the plaid, the plaid advice. There, kind of cool. So thanks for joining you guys, and I'll post on on the video um, on the comment who the winner is. But it, you may not see that till Wednesday morning. So have a great week, you guys, and.
or until our next free painting session. I'll try to do one next month too. So thanks you guys. Have a great, great um, month. Happy Valentine's Day. So until our next class, good night.